Hey guys, it's Ray Alvarez, Shoot With Ray, and in my hand, I'm currently holding a speed light. Some people call this thing a few different names, such as a strobe, a flash, etc. But today, we're gonna call this a speed light. Now, if you're just starting out, getting to know about lighting or learning the lighting basics, not only is this video for you, but this speed light is for you too. And it's all you're going to need for a little while when it comes to lighting. All right, so let's start with this. This is a speed light. When I first started photography, I purchased one similar to this called the Young Newell 560 or the Young Newell 560. It was $69.99 at the time. When I purchased it, I had no clue about the features and whatnot, TTL and manual flash. Through the lens, aka TTL and manual are two different modes of controlling flash exposure in photography. With TTL, the camera automatically adjusts the flash output based on the light metered through the lens. It's convenient because it calculates the proper exposure for you in real time, even in changing lighting conditions. So it's kind of doing a lot of the guessing work for you and it adjusts accordingly. In manual mode, you need to do all of the work, but you retain all of the control. This might not make sense to you right now, but as you practice more, you will learn which method you like the most. So with that, I want you to guess how many shoots I've done using TTL mode in my career as a photographer. Drop that number below in the comments. The clock starts now. All right, time's up. I've done two shoots my entire career using TTL. I just don't use TTL anymore. Nothing wrong with using it. In fact, maybe I could have saved a ton of time, maybe an accumulation of hours at this point. I don't know, but I don't use TTL. Guys, if you're just starting out with flash or learning how to light, this speed light is for you. Okay, this manual flash is powered by a lithium ion battery and it puts out 76 watts of power and it's going to be your smallest, lightest, and weakest artificial light source. It's a flash. It's small because you can literally stuff it in your camera bag or camera case. Light because it's truly really light. The unit is literally one pound. And by week, I mean it packs a small punch, especially if you need it for a quick portrait session or at an event or wedding. But weak in the sense that if you're using this thing at full power each time, its battery is going to deplete really fast. Unless you're doing some creative portraits in the dark at night or, or something, I don't, I don't see why you have to shoot at full power with this thing for each shot. But I usually see myself using this at 1 over 16 or 1 over 32 at most times. Sometimes 1 over 64 or 1 over 128 being the lowest power on this unit. There are so many different brands out there for speed lights. There's the FJ80 by Westcott, the A10 by Profoto, and many more. However, the lighting brand I use is Flashpoint. And for that reason, I'm holding up a Flashpoint speed light. So we're going to base it off of that today. And if you're new to Flash, Flashpoint and Godox are literally the same thing. Godox is an Asian lighting brand and Flashpoint is based here in the States by Adorama. So you know the customer service is going to be on point. All right, enough with the branding mumbo jumbo. This is an 8400 Pro. It is not a speed light. This is called a strobe, but it's technically a mono light, meaning it has a built-in power source and can be used off camera with a more significant output and additional features, making it more versatile for various lighting setups. Some mono lights can be heavy or bulky, sometimes even being too big to carry around, just like that one. But a unit like this is a conversation for another day. Once you can master a unit like this, you can master mono lights. We need to get you comfortable with off-camera flash. The cool thing about the speed light is that it can be on camera, which means you can use the hot shoe on the speed light and attach it to your camera. Or you can use the speed light wirelessly by using a remote transmitter to trigger the flash. Most speed lights come with this feature nowadays. A remote trigger like this will sync with the speed light just like that, and then you can get creative with placement of your light. Take a look at all of the photos I'm about to show you. They're really old. I created them years ago in the infancy of my photo career, where I used the one 
YN560 or the Young Noor 560 for all of the photos you're about to see. Look, the proof is in the photos from early on in my career. You can do it all with one light. I relied solely on one light for a very long time until I got comfortable with flash. Once I was able to use it well and efficiently, my curiosity sparked and I was then ready to start experimenting with one or more lights during a shoot. That's when I invested in about two or three more of these. I started using them a lot at weddings and eventually started incorporating gels into my lighting. That's this thing here. So if you're new to lighting, this is a gel. This specific gel card I'm holding right now is from Magmod. This gel card comes in a set of different colored gels. You take this and the mag grip and you install it on your flash like so. And then you take the gel and the magnets will attach to it just like that. Now you have a gel on your light and you can create awesome images just like this. Magmod is an amazing lighting accessory brand that I have heavily invested in. Check out the gels and lots more of their light modifiers on their website Use the code Ray Alvarez to save some dollars. Anyways, back to the speed light. Look, get yourself a speed light. I don't care the brand or the model. Get something light and affordable. Practice, practice, and practice, guys. And practice some more. Once you're comfortable with TTL settings, power and exposing for ambient and whatnot, or if you decide to use flash manually, like me, once you get comfortable with all of that, then get yourself a few more and start getting creative with light. Look, I'm also going to be transparent. This is the V852. It's not new, but it's a slightly older speed light by Flashpoint. I didn't have the V1 here to film this video. I own like four of these. They do the job, they work just well for me and my workflow. I'll link this specific one down below, and I would recommend that you purchase this one along with a transmitter like the R2 Nano. Once you've got it and you've played with this just a bit, come back to this video and let me know how adding one of these speed lights to your workflow has benefited your photography. I would love to hear the feedback. I've just recently launched a very, very, very affordable version of my mentorship program where you have direct access to me, one-on-one -on -one for questions, open dialogue, and way more, right here on this channel. Just join the exclusive membership by clicking the join button below. This will give you access to exclusive videos that aren't available publicly on my channel, along with limited mentorship with me. I'll help you with lights and more. But now that you've watched this video, you know which speed light you need, and when you're ready, you can then contact some models and practice more with them. Do you want to know where to find models you can practice your photography in? Tap on a video on your screen. Thanks for watching. Oh.